Ah, it's you. Where I'm going is hardly your business. Do me a favor and mind your own, won't you? <laughs> Ever the professor, aren't you? So, what's your deal? Worried about my well-being? <laughs> That's adorable. I get the sense you're not so hot at assessing people. Just giving you a hard time. Either way, it doesn't matter much to me. There's no slowing me down tonight. I've got important things to attend to right now. <sighs> there you go with that nose of yours. It still isn't your business. But it looks like you won't let me leave until I tell you. You'll get your way this time. There's a dispute. Or maybe treachery is the more fitting word. Regardless, a purge is required. <sighs> I see I've got to spell it all out for you. One of my goons double-crossed the gang. He absconded with his boss's small fortune. My small fortune. And buddied up with another gang. Members of the gang are recognizable by their scorpion tattoos. Suffice it to say, they're not a group you want to tangle with. Despite that, I'm not about to just roll over and play dead on this. So I figured I'd pay them a little visit, have a spot of tea with their boss. Makes sense, you know. Like I'm not aware? <laughs> wow, friend, you clearly underestimate me. I play my cards wisely. I wouldn't play if there wasn't any hope of winning. There you go being adorable again. I don't think that's a good idea, but thanks. Better head off now. I've got people waiting for me just outside of town. See you around. <sighs> what is it you're after? Money? Me? Or are you just looking for someone to kill? You seem adamant. So... I'll allow it. Won't hurt to have backup if things go south. I trust you, for now. But I don't know how reliable you actually are. Just so we're clear, you mess with any of my people, I'll slit your throat without hesitation. Got that? Hey friend. Thanks for joining me when I had to deal with that mess a while ago. You were a real help. I wouldn't say you fully earned my trust, but... You've earned something, for sure. I owe you. I can't not worry about it. I don't like owing people. Guess I'll just have to surprise you someday. I was just rummaging through what we recovered from the Scorpions, and I stumbled across something pretty special to me. It was under lock and key, so those thugs probably thought it was something of high value. The Elder gave it to me when I was small. Losing it really got me where it hurts. I guess it couldn't hurt to tell you about it. Can't quite remember how old I was, but my mother had taken in an elderly man wandering the town. He was worse for wear, could barely even walk. She nursed him back to health under a humble roof. In return for her kindly gesture, he taught me to read and write. This notebook is a relic of those times. Not too long after that, I came down with a terrible illness. We had no money to speak of, so a doctor's visit was out of the question. My mother went everywhere asking for help, to no avail. And then the Elder stepped in and saved me. I don't know how he did it, or what it was he did. Could have been. I never knew much about him, honestly. He could have been a mage, a scholar. I haven't the foggiest. And I'll never know. Shortly after curing me of my illness, he passed on natural causes. My illness, it turns out, was part of a larger plague that swept through our village. So many died. 
there I was, having escaped death by some strange luck. I felt grateful and helpless. So little Yuri figured it would be his mission to help anyone he could as he grew up. However I could. Not necessarily by making gold rain from the sky, but in smaller ways. The streets are filled with kids who have no homes, no food, so many dying of disease, or some cheap medicine would have saved them. I figure, if I can save even one unlucky soul, well, then I'm doing my part, you know? It's a small dream, but it's one I hold in my heart, to help those who need it. It's what my gang's about. When I recruit my people, it's to that end. To give them a home. The turf wars, the gang, all of it. To honor that dream. Yeah? Well, thanks. Despite what you now know about me, I'm still the Lord of the Underground. Don't go forgetting that. I do what I have to, whether people view it as fair or foul. The way I see things, the goddess gave me two gifts. My life and my charm. That's been gift enough to get in with slimy nobles, so I can pull their strings as I see fit. Of course, I use my marionettes to help me smuggle things. Maneuver as needed. You get the idea. Once I used a clever name, and my charms, to become the attendant to the head slug of a noble house. Yet another time, I took a name befitting the kingdom that landed me in the academy as a noble's adopted son. That's how I've gotten this far and earned my fortune. In doing so, I've spread my wings of protection further to help those who need it most. <laughs> as though I tell you, friend. But perhaps you can share what it is you think. Looks like I've got them all. Nah, just wrapped up what I was doing. Need something, friend? Oh, you mean this. I use it to write down the names of everyone I've lost over the years. We lost a lot of lives back in the war. Some of them were only with me a little while. Some of them were family to me. Somewhere along the way, I figured I should record the names of those I've lost. The ones I failed to protect. There's nothing we can do for the dead. Not in this world. Not really, anyway. And it's not like we know what happens after. So writing their names down here, that's all just for me. For the one who's still around. After all, they deserve to be remembered. Even if they're not here to see it. We all shared the same dream. They lost their lives to build that dream. And as their leader, it's on me to remember them. However I can. <laughs> if you can see why I do that, then that's something, I guess. Well, anyway... Make of my notebook what you will. It doesn't matter much to me. If you go before I do, I'll make sure to add you in here as well. You heard me. I mean, you're not exactly one of my people, per se. At this point, I do have to admit that I... I can count on you. I kinda get the sense that if I hang around you, that dream I've been grasping for will become all the more real. So, do me a favor and don't go dying on me, okay? <laughs> Certainly aren't lacking in confidence, are you? Hmm, cat got your tongue. Looks like you want to say something but don't know how. That again? You don't give up easy, do you? All right, all right. I'll toss you a bone. My name's not actually my name. But it's the one I'm enrolled with here at the Academy. The one I've hung on to as the adoptive house row. Come to think of it, 
The last I heard someone use my real name was... <laughs> a very long time ago. From my mom. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll tell you. Perhaps if you decide to pursue that dream alongside me, you'll find out. You came. I'm sure you already know where this is headed. Don't toy with me, friend. Though I suppose you've always had that tendency, haven't you? All right, whatever. I'll get right to it. You're the ruler of Fotland now. That makes you the most powerful person in the world. Next to your brilliance, I'm not much more than a flightless sparrow. All I've got are my dreams, a handful of people working for me, and a pittance of gold. Well, and my undeniable charms, of course. So I've got to know. Is there any room in your bright and shining world for someone like me? <laughs> Always straight to the point with you. I should know that by now. Well, here we go then. I want you to take this. Consider it my token of thanks. A repayment for all you've done for me. If that makes you smile. You backed me up when I needed some help. Even though I wouldn't admit it. Bit of a turf war, if you recall. I always repay what's owed. It's how I sleep at night. But if you really don't need it, I've got another idea. Maybe it's more of an agreement. In return for this ring, I ask for you. <sighs> don't play coy with me. Or maybe you're just dragging me over the coals for fun. I can't recall how many times others have asked me this. Being the one extending the invite, it certainly isn't easy. I used to feel like saving the life of even one person who needed it would be enough. But I've set my sights even higher. A future in which nobody has to die from something as awful as poverty. I know it's a dream worth reaching for, however grand it might be. And you are truly special. I feel like together that dream could be made a reality. It may never happen, but it's important to try. Anyway, I'm just a person like anyone. I'll die, just like anyone. Whenever that happens, someone will have to take over as boss. I've got that all lined up already. And so long as my people keep living with the same tenacity I've taught them, I've no doubt my dream will live on, whether or not I'm around to see to it. My name might fade into the dust, but my dream will remain. For the longest time, that was more than enough. But now I've come to want something else. When I go, I want someone around to write my name in my old notebook. I can't see anyone else more suited to the task than you. What's wrong? Did I say something strange? I just want to make sure things are set up properly. You never know when it'll be my time. <laughs> I suppose I did just talk a fair bit about death during a proposal, didn't I? Normally, I'm much more charming. I think you get it anyway. So, will you accept my offer? Yeah? Something else you want? Well, you certainly don't forget, huh? I've always kept it private out of necessity. Couldn't have such a secret being spread around, after all. If there's anyone I'll tell, it's you. Listen closely now. Ah, it's you. Where I'm going is hardly your business. Do me a favor and mind your own, won't you? I somehow doubt your sincerity. My intuition says you'll keep nosing into what I'm doing. So, what's your deal? Worried about my well-being? <laughs> ha! 
That's adorable. I get the sense you're not so hot at assessing people. Just giving you a hard time. Either way, it doesn't matter much to me. There's no slowing me down tonight. I've got important things to attend to right now. <sighs> there you go with that nose of yours. It still isn't your business. But it looks like you won't let me leave until I tell you. You get your way this time. There's a dispute. Or maybe treachery is the more fitting word. Regardless, a purge is required. <sighs> I see I've got to spell it all out for you. One of my goons double-crossed the gang. He absconded with his boss's small fortune. My small fortune. And buddied up with another gang. Members of the gang are recognizable by their scorpion tattoos. Suffice it to say, they're not a group you want to tangle with. Despite that, I'm not about to just roll over and play dead on this. So I figured I'd pay them a little visit, have a spot of tea with their boss. Makes sense, you know. <laughs> As a former mercenary, I knew you'd get it. You know how things are done in our world. I play my cards wisely. I wouldn't play if there wasn't any hope of winning. Same. Ever since I became boss, I've had this nagging feeling like things are just... off. But I certainly can't lead well by letting my feelings get the better of me. Better head off now. I've got people waiting for me just outside of town. See you around. What is it you're after? Money? Me? Or are you just looking for someone to kill? You seem adamant. So, I'll allow it. Won't hurt to have backup if things go south. I trust you, for now. But I don't know how reliable you actually are. Just so we're clear. You mess with any of my people, I'll slit your throat without hesitation. Got that? Hey friend, thanks for joining me when I had to deal with that mess a while ago. You were a real help. I wouldn't say you fully earned my trust, but you've earned something for sure. I owe you. I can't not worry about it. I don't like owing people. Guess I'll just have to surprise you someday. I was just rummaging through what we recovered from the Scorpions, and I stumbled across something pretty special to me. It was under lock and key, so those thugs probably thought it was something of high value. The Elder gave it to me when I was small. Losing it really got me where it hurts. I guess it couldn't hurt to tell you about it. Can't quite remember how old I was, but my mother had taken in an elderly man wandering the town. He was worse for wear, could barely even walk. She nursed him back to health under a humble roof. In return for her kindly gesture, he taught me to read and write. This notebook is a relic of those times. Not too long after that, I came down with a terrible illness. We had no money to speak of, so a doctor's visit was out of the question. My mother went everywhere asking for help, to no avail. And then the Elder stepped in and saved me. I don't know how he did it, or what it was he did. Long since passed on. Natural causes. I believe it happened shortly after he cured me. My illness, it turns out, was part of a larger plague that swept through our village. So many died. And there I was, having escaped death by some strange luck. I felt grateful. And helpless. So little Yuri figured it would be his mission. To help anyone he could as he grew up. However I could. Not necessarily by making gold rain from the sky, but in smaller ways. The streets are filled with kids who have no homes, no food, so many dying of disease. 
or some cheap medicine would have saved them. I figure, if I can save even one unlucky soul, well, then I'm doing my part, you know? It's a small dream, but it's one I hold in my heart. To help those who need it. It's what my gang's about. When I recruit my people, it's to that end. To give them a home. The turf wars, the gang, all of it. To honor that dream. Yeah? Well, thanks. Despite what you now know about me, I'm still the Lord of the Underground. Don't go forgetting that. I do what I have to, whether people view it as fair or foul. The way I see things, the Goddess gave me two gifts. My life and my charm. That's been gift enough to get in with slimy nobles, so I can pull their strings as I see fit. Of course. It wasn't always easy, but in the end, it's all the same little game. Once I used a clever name, and my charms, to become the attendant to the head slug of a noble house. Yet another time, I took a name befitting the kingdom that landed me in the academy as a noble's adopted son. That's how I've gotten this far and earned my fortune. In doing so, I've spread my wings of protection further to help those who need it most. <laughs> As though I tell you, friend. But perhaps you can share what it is you think, hmm? Looks like I've got them all. Just wrapped up on a task. I'll finish now, though. Oh, you mean this? I use it to write down the names of everyone I've lost over the years. We lost a lot of lives back in the war. Some of them were only with me a little while. Some of them were family to me. Somewhere along the way, I figured I should record the names of those I've lost. The ones I failed to protect. There's nothing we can do for the dead, not in this world. Not really, anyway. And it's not like we know what happens after. So writing their names down here, that's all just for me. For the one who's still around. After all, they deserve to be remembered. Even if they're not here to see it. We all shared the same dream. They lost their lives to build that dream. And as their leader, it's on me to remember them. However I can. <laughs> if you can see why I do that, then that's something, I guess. Well, anyway, make of my notebook what you will. It doesn't matter much to me. If you go before I do, I'll make sure to add you in here as well. You may not be one of my people, per se. At this point, I do have to admit that I... I can count on you. I kinda get the sense that if I hang around you, that dream I've been grasping for will become all the more real. So, do me a favor and don't go dying on me, okay? It'd take a lot to get rid of me. I was born under a particularly lucky star. Hmm, cat got your tongue? Looks like you want to say something but don't know how. That again? You don't give up easy, do you? All right, all right. I'll toss you a bone. My name's not actually my name. But it's the one I'm enrolled with here at the Academy. The one I've hung on to as the adoptee of House Row. Come to think of it, the last I heard someone use my real name was... <laughs> a very long time ago. From my mom. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll tell you. Perhaps if you decide to pursue that dream alongside me, you'll find out. You came. I'm sure you already know where this is headed. Seriously? I thought you were a little sharper than that. 
All right, whatever. I'll get right to it. You're the ruler of Fodlin now. That makes you the most powerful person in the world. Next to your brilliance, I'm not much more than a flightless sparrow. All I've got are my dreams, a handful of people working for me, and a pittance of gold. Well, and my undeniable charms, of course. So I've got to know. Is there any room in your bright and shining world for someone like me? <laughs> Always straight to the point with you. I should know that by now. Well, here we go then. You came. I'm sure you already know where this is headed. Seriously? I thought you were a little sharper than that. All right, whatever. I'll get right to it. You're the Emperor's favorite subject now. That's a pretty place you're sitting at. Next to your brilliance, I'm not much more than a flightless sparrow. All I've got are my dreams, a handful of people working for me, and a pittance of gold. Well, and my undeniable charms, of course. So I've got to know. Is there any room in your bright and shining world for someone like me? You came. I'm sure you already know where this is headed. Seriously? I thought you were a little sharper than that. All right, whatever. I'll get right to it. You're the ruler of Fodlin now. That makes you the most powerful person in the world. Next to your brilliance, I'm not much more than a flightless sparrow. All I've got are my dreams, a handful of people working for me, and a pittance of gold. Well, and my undeniable charms, of course. So I've got to know. Is there any room in your bright and shining world for someone like me? <laughs> Always straight to the point with you. I should know that by now. Well, here we go then. I want you to take this. Consider it my token of thanks. A repayment for all you've done for me. If that makes you smile. Forgotten, have you? Well, I suppose it has been five years after all. You backed me up when I needed some help, even though I wouldn't admit it. Bit of a turf war, if you recall. I always repay what's owed. It's how I sleep at night. But if you really don't need it, I've got another idea. Maybe it's more of an agreement. In return for this ring, I ask for you. Don't play coy with me, or maybe you're just dragging me over the coals for fun. I can't recall how many times others have asked me this. Being the one extending the invite, it certainly isn't easy. I used to feel like saving the life of even one person who needed it would be enough. But I've set my sights even higher. A future in which nobody has to die from something as awful as poverty. I know it's a dream worth reaching for, however grand it might be. And you are truly special. I feel like together that dream could be made a reality. It may never happen, but it's important to try. Anyway, I'm just a person like anyone. I'll die just like anyone. Whenever that happens, someone will have to take over as boss. I've got that all lined up already. And so long as my people keep living with the same tenacity I've taught them, I've no doubt my dream will live on, whether or not I'm around to see to it. My name might fade into the dust, but my dream will remain. For the longest time, that was more than enough. But now I've come to want something else. When I go, I want someone around to write my name in my old notebook. I can't see anyone else more suited to the task than you. What's wrong? Did I say something strange? 
I just want to make sure things are set up properly. You never know when it'll be my time. <laughs> I suppose I did just talk a fair bit about death during a proposal, didn't I? Normally, I'm much more charming. I think you get it anyway. So, will you accept my offer? Yeah? Something else you want? Well, you certainly don't forget, huh? I've always kept it private out of necessity. Couldn't have such a secret being spread around, after all. If there's anyone I'll tell, it's you. Listen closely now. Bernadetta. <laughs> you can see me! Clearly. You're a tricky one. Always trying to hide when I'm around. Oh, sorry. Please forgive me. If you want forgiveness, then explain yourself. But make it quick. You always ramble on. Um, well, when I was little, my mother and father, they... You've gotta be kidding. Cut to the chase, please. Friends. Oh, come now. Whoever this friend of yours is can't possibly compare to me. Uh, I'm telling the truth. All right, all right. What was this friend like then? The way you run and hide from me, they must have been a real piece of work. That's not it at all. He was the assistant to the gardener at our estate. My friend was gentle, trustworthy, gorgeous. And, well... He was the only person who was ever nice to me. We used to run around the gardens playing together. And why is it you keep running away from me? That's... D uh, do I really have to say? We hardly even know each other. You never have to do anything. But if you don't, you and I won't have a shot at knowing one another. And you'll carry on avoiding me forever. But that's no good either! Okay, okay tell you. The thing is, because of me, he got in trouble. After that, I never saw him again. You see, my father hated commoners, and when he found out I was spending a lot of time with one, well, he's probably dead now, and it's all my fault. It's because of me. He must have hated me. <sighs> that... Uh, that doesn't sound right to me. Why would you think all that? Nothing you did would make his death your fault. And hating you for something that isn't your fault is absolutely absurd. Delusional, even. You're wrong! He'd definitely hate me if he knew! How would you know, anyway? What? Did you know my friend or something? In a manner... <sighs> right. So, remember back when you were a kid? You tripped while holding some gardening shears, and your friend got cut pretty badly. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I remember. But how did you know about that? If I bore you any ill will, it would have only been for cutting my face with those damn shears. Cutting your face? Shears? But there's no way! But there is. That friend? That was me, Bernadetta. Anyway, I'm glad I finally got to hear how you felt about all of that. Let's spend time together later and chat about the good old days. Get to know each other again. But how did... But... <sighs> Bernadetta, knock it off. How long are you going to keep this up? Wait up, would you? Running away every time you see me is just going to wear us both out. If you've got something to say, say it already. You've been shadowing me for ages. Think how I feel. I mean, when we have missions together, you avoid me like the plague. Even the professor doesn't know what to say. I can't be around you, Yuri. It's just not doable. I 
know what my father did to you. It's all just too overwhelming. I thought you died. You thought I had. But I hadn't. I was halfway to my grave, but I survived. Halfway? Then that means the half of you that survived is gonna seek revenge on me! I was half dead, sure. But that really meant I was able to get out with my life. If I was to seek revenge, it would be on the Count, not you. When I'm looking to make things even, it's all or nothing. You wouldn't be standing here talking to me right now if I targeted you. If not here, then where would I be? At the bottom of a ravine? I wouldn't push you off a cliffside. Maybe you'll tie me to a big rock and drop me in the ocean. Is that it? You're gonna turn me into fish food. I knew it! What are you going on about? Mercy! If it has to be a watery grave, please just drop me in icy water so I freeze instead of drown! Kids got issues. Well, I guess I'd better tell her everything. Frigid ocean waters! I can feel them already! Calm, calm. Just listen to me for a moment. There's something I need to tell you. The reason I worked for House Varley, Bernadetta, was to kill you. Ha! I knew it. I always knew you were out to kill me. Sink me into the deep, dark, freezing depths. Oh, hold on. House Varley? But why? As you well know, theirs is one of the six great noble houses, the true rulers of the Empire. And you're the heir, with the crest. There were tons of people who wanted you wiped out. Like people who want to eradicate House Farley. Or a relative who wants the glory for themselves. That particular breed of treacherous nobility is the kind that'd hire a kid to do their dirty work. The first thing that kid would do? Get close to the target by befriending her. Find an inn through, say, an assistant gig? This kid you're mentioning sounds real. That was you, wasn't it? Yours truly. My biggest mistake? Getting to know you. I crept into your room one night and readied my blade. The whole thing had been a breeze. Up until that moment, I couldn't bring myself to do it. While I hovered there, hesitating, your father came in. You know the rest. Why are you telling me all this? I'm so confused. Because I want you to look at it objectively. I was hired to kill you. Your father protected you from me. A filthy assassin. He was looking out for you. You're lucky to have a father who cares for you enough to do that. Father protected me? He protected me. Yeah. Why would I lie? At this point, I figure it's you who hates me. And not the other way around. I don't hate you, Yuri. But I mean, I do feel weird. But I don't know how to feel. I just... Can't we just be friends? Like back then? You want to be friends... with... me? The reason you couldn't kill me was because we were friends, right? Well... You were my first friend. My very first friend. The first person who played with me. The first person who went on adventures with me. The first... And you were the first friend I had to baby that much. What do you mean? Well, even so, you were the first friend who cared for me. The whole thing was probably a sham anyway. Though you know, even if it was, I did have a lot of fun with you. <laughs> I knew it! Time I fessed up, Yurikins. I saw the whole thing. What was it you think you saw? It looked like you were singing to the children in the alley out back. And may I say, you were fantastic. Your performance hit me right in the heart. That was a song from Middle Frong's Imperial Capital show, right? Ah, the good old days. You must have come back night after night if you remember it that well. Perhaps a few times. I remember well how you looked upon that stage. 
You were the talk of the capital among all the nobles. Unsurpassable? Yes, that was it. It's hard to believe I'd run into that unsurpassable songstress in a place like this. <laughs> Luck is on my side, as ever. I couldn't convince you to sing tenor yourself, hmm? You're talented enough for it. What are you getting at? Is this an invitation from the mystical songstress herself? Male virtuosos are hard to come by. Would-be divas are a dime a dozen, but men? Not so much. And they have to be talented. As good as I am, which is very talented indeed. I think you have what it takes. If you're interested, I can... Sorry, but no. No way in hell am I ever doing that. Goodness. You could have stopped at no. I can't think of anything more wretched than getting up on a stage to sing in front of a bunch of people. You didn't seem to mind singing for those children. The little ones weren't feeling well and couldn't sleep, so I sang them a lullaby to help. That's a far cry from standing on the same stage as you have, with all of those stuffy nobles staring at me. Truthfully, I'm not brave enough for it. Rain it in, Yurikins. It's the opera, not the battlefield. This isn't a life-or-death situation. <laughs> Fair enough. Sometimes I forget what's a real threat and what isn't. But I must ask you to never bring up singing again. Not to me. Not if you want to keep things amicable between us. How can someone that good at singing hate it so much? Nice to see you, Yurikins. I was wondering if you might do me a favor. You're looking a bit serious, Ladybird. Oh, your foot. What happened? It's healing nicely, but I'm not supposed to put too much weight on it. Ah, so that's why you've called me here. What do you need? Help with errands? Not an errand. An opera. I see. There's been some loose plans for a performance. Nothing professional, strictly volunteer. I signed up to take part as one of the main roles. And then this happened. The professor told me I should bow out just to be on the safe side. Makes sense to stay off your feet while you heal. Meanwhile, you want me to fill your role, right? Got it in one. I'm glad we're on the same page here. Surely someone else is up to the task. Professor Manuela, for example. Already tried. Trust me, I wouldn't ask unless I was desperate. I knew how much you'd hate the idea. Aside from hating it, I also wouldn't remotely sound like you do. Oh, don't worry about that. Most of our audience won't be able to tell the difference. The crowd's going to be a bunch of down-on-their-luck children that the monastery's taken in. I'm only talking about a small festival in the plaza. We want to give them a good show, that's all. You have an idea of what they've been through. I thought you might want to pitch in. Mm -hmm. I hear your angle. Fine, fine, yes, I'll do it. Good for you. I knew you'd rise to the occasion. You certainly know how to pull heartstrings to get your way, don't you? Where did you learn to do that anyway? The opera. Could be. I've never known a songstress who wasn't both beautiful and resourceful. Now, are you ready to go over the libretto? You've got a lot of rehearsing to do before the performance. Seriously, though. Thanks, Hurricanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Yurikins, isn't it about time you let go of this grudge? <sighs> I'm sorry I dragged you out onto the stage, but I can't believe you're still holding it against me. I bear no grudge. Then why do you get this stony look and face the other way any time you catch a glimpse of me? <sighs> oh, Ladybird. Truth be told, when I see you... It reminds me of my own self-loathing, of my past. Huh. I didn't know you were carrying something like that. You rose up from your hardships and became the lead singer for a prestigious opera, all on your own, while I made my way through the world by licking the boots of wretched nobles, watching you on stage from the sidelines. It wasn't until recently that I felt a real sense of accomplishment in my life, but recalling that first pivotal moment when I saw you on stage. 
You were brilliant. You shone like nothing I'd ever seen. Whenever I see you, Lady Bird, I'm reminded of that moment. And in that moment, I had never felt so filthy and unlovable in all my life. That's why you don't like singing? There's got to be more to it than that. Back then, the Imperial capital was swarming with disgusting nobles. All of them vying for your attention. For the love of the Dorothea. Many were willing to compromise with an inferior substitute. If they couldn't have you, perhaps someone else was capable of singing just as sweetly. You do what you must to chase your dreams. You say it left you filthy and unlovable, but my life didn't leave me unscathed either. There's not much love left in what I do. There was once, of course. As a child, I lived for singing. No matter how hard times got, I always had that. I counted myself so lucky to have met Manuela and joined the opera, but the more I sang for a living, the less certain I was that I loved it anymore. You're a tricky one to assess. I can't tell if you're too wise or too naive for your own good. Whether or not your heart's in it now, you certainly didn't appear to hate it back then. I'd never seen you beam so brightly as you did when you helped me train for the performance. <sighs> you might be onto something. I felt genuinely happy in that moment. You just lost your spark for singing. Nothing more. It's how I feel about it in a way. How about this? Why not join an opera that doesn't have dealings with nobles? That's... a great idea, actually. We'll start something new together, you and me. I don't know about all that now. The world is full of people who fell through the cracks just like us. We'll take them in whenever we can and aim to become Fodlin's premier opera company. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I was this fired up. Though, we'll have to table it until after the war. Hmm. Our own one-of-a-kind traveling opera. You know, that does sound fairly thrilling. I have no doubts it could help deepen our pockets. <laughs> Leave it to you to take all the romance out of it. But I know you're an idealist deep down. Takes one to know one. I must say. I do enjoy seeing your mischievous side at work. I'll take that as a compliment. I could say the same for you, too. It's exactly why I'm comfortable sharing this dream with you. Mm. Yes, it's decided. This meat is the best meat. Although the other inn has pretty great offerings as well. Ah, if it isn't Ingrid. What are you up to in a place like this? Yuri, I could ask you the same. I'm just out to send a little money to my family. Gotta help however I can, you know. Oh, that's very nice of you. Forgive my tone earlier. You truly set a noble example. Right, right. Anyhow, it looked like I interrupted you. You nearly choked on that wad of meat you were gnawing on. Oh, uh, right. That... that is true, I suppose. Hmm. You know, I... Um... What is it you're mumbling about? Oh, um... Nothing. Anyway, you once worked for House Roe, didn't you? Four years ago, when I visited Count Roe at his castle, I swore I saw you by his side. Quite the sharp memory you have. You aren't mistaken. I was staying there then, yes. I had been adopted by the Count. Oh? Come to think of it, I thought I'd heard something like that. That the Count had adopted a distant relative of his. A young man whose future was both bright and promising. So, that was you? Yep. Although now, I'm nothing more than a distant stranger to him. Our ties were severed a while ago. He helped me out by getting me into the Academy. It wasn't long after that that we started having all sorts of... disagreements. <laughs> what the hell were you doing visiting House Row anyhow? Ah, uh, yes. That. How to put it. It was to help clean up after a friend. Ah, you speak of Sylvain. Mm -hmm. That must have been quite the mess you were cleaning up. 
back to the point. What are you doing out here? Do you frequent this area often? Mind your business, won't you? I just like to go for walks, get fresh air, that sort of thing. Easy now. I'm not interrogating you. Really, I just wanted to warn you that it isn't so safe here in the evenings. You'll want to be on your guard. I thank you for your concern, but I assure you I can handle myself. Noted. Oh yeah, the innkeeper also wanted me to thank you. Hmm? He wanted to thank you for being such an enthusiast for the food he sells. Seemed pretty happy about it. <sighs> Is that so? How very... <sighs> well, I'd better be off. Seems she doesn't want anyone seeing her with a face full of food. Too late. So, what is it, Yuri? You had me come all this way. I need you for something. Have a seat. I won't take much of your time. Okay... My apologies for keeping you waiting. Here you are. Oh, wow! Did you make this yourself? I may not seem like much of a chef, but I know a thing or two about cooking. Looks tasty, hmm? Can I, uh, eat it now? I'm famished after all the training. Have at? That's why I asked you here. I see. Well, thank you. Don't mind if I do. Mmm, this dish is divine. The first bite just melts in your mouth, and these vegetables are perfect. The flavors are interwoven together like... Like a dance of swords between two Myrmidons. <laughs> Calm yourself, Ingrid. I'm in no need of a critique. I just want you to enjoy it and take a load off. Aw, thank you. I will. <sighs> that was delicious, Yuri. I cannot thank you enough. I'm glad. Then it was worth all the toil that went into preparing it. You haven't eaten anything for yourself? I figured I'd eat something a bit later. I didn't make the meal for me. You cooked only for me? Mm-hmm. The innkeeper provided me with some of his finest meat and told me to feed you. I figured if I was going to do it, I'd better do it right. So I popped into the kitchen and got working. That won't do at all, Yuri. Meals are meant to be shared. It seems my stomach got the better of me this time, though. And I scarfed everything before remembering that. Why bother yourself with such trivialities? The meal was a gift. Seeing you enjoy yourself like that is all the reward I need. What way is that? A bit like when you had all that meat stuffed into your cheeks at the marketplace. Like some kind of chipmunk. <laughs> I like seeing the contentment on your face when you cut loose. You do? The innkeeper couldn't have said it better. She's got a real foodie face, that one. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to feel. <laughs> really, though. There are a few things I enjoy as much as seeing a woman indulging herself. You should consider your words before using them. Such a flirtatious comment can only invite misunderstandings. I didn't mean it that way. Finally, you've arrived. I was beginning to get impatient. Have a seat. What are you on about? I'm not on about anything. Let's have dinner together, Yuri. What is this? Did you make it? I did. It's a simple dish. My culinary skills are fairly basic. Hold on. What exactly is this about? You cook for me, I cook for you. That's how this works. It may not be quite as elegant a meal as that of Adrestian or Lester cuisine, but the food of Fargus is delicious nonetheless. Thank you for the meal. It was lovely, Ingrid. The flavors were nostalgic. Reminded me of when I lived with my mother and the Elder. 
I was actually born in a poor town in Fargus. The flavors in this dish remind me of those days. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to compare a meal made by nobility with the meager food I grew up eating. No offense taken. To tell the truth, although my house is a noble one, it's also lacking in money. Our territory was struck by famine, and we ate whatever the land gave us, which wasn't much. We took what we could, just like everyone. I see. Well, I must say that your cooking is quite to my taste. Any meal made with so much thought and care is bound to be delicious. <laughs> Why, thank you! High praise indeed, from someone who knows their way around a kitchen. To survive in this world means to sharpen many skills. Whether it's cooking, or anything else, really. Although I've gotta say, I do enjoy cooking. And if my meals can bring a smile to someone's face, all the better. Celebrating victories with friends, sitting around a table with loved ones, watching someone enjoy the meal I made them. Few things bring me more joy. Have you ever considered giving up being the Lord of the Underworld and becoming a chef instead? <laughs> a chef, huh? You know, that doesn't sound half bad. If you ever do, I'd come to your restaurant and eat whatever you'd whipped up every day. I'd like that very much. I'd work extra hard so I could see that lovely smile of yours. <laughs> you are just too much. I can hardly maintain my composure around you. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> Not at all, Yuri. Not at all. The Myrmidon. Ha! Sit yourself. My gut says the odds are in favor of that mercenary. He's clearly a seasoned f- Yeah! Right when I open my big mouth, he goes and loses on me. <laughs> I win. Again. Had enough, Bothus. Damn you, you've won every round. The fights are rigged. Admit it, it's the only explanation. <laughs> of course they aren't. It's not like we're playing for money. We wouldn't be so foolish now, would we? You're the one who started this silly game anyway. So out with it. You lost? Spill the beans. It has to be juicy, though. Something that leaves you a bit... vulnerable. Why did I agree to these stakes? If this losing streak keeps up, you'll know an awful lot about me, pal. Let's see... Okay, got one! A few years back, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bird beast in some ancient ruins. <sighs> this one again? You obliterated the ruins, and the lord who found out put a price on your head. You've told me a thousand times before. Good story bears repeating, yeah? But it seems I'm all out of anecdotes. How about I take my shirt off and let you look your fill instead? Two full minutes. Oh, come now. As if I'm interested in seeing your sweaty torso for the umpteenth time. If you're fresh out of stories, then I have a question for you. About your crest. Hit me where it hurts, why don't you? Is this your idea of negotiation? Perhaps. Or perhaps I'm simply curious. Tell me, how did you come across such a rarity? To my knowledge, nobody within House Albrecht has your crest. Why well, ask what you already know? You've got your own rare crest, so I'm sure you figured it out. Unless you think the goddess gave us these things while we slept. <laughs> Wait, do you? Hey now, I'm the one winning the bets, so I'm the one asking the questions. Got me there. Hey look, the next round's starting. My luck's about to turn around. I can feel it. Let's do you a favor and call it good here. No need to embarrass yourself further, friend. Even if I'm terrible at this, I can't walk away during a losing streak. I have my own sort of honor. <sighs> All right, Balthus. Check out... those two Myrmidons. The two who were eating together earlier? Huh. Who knew they were opponents? I kind of figured. Thoughts? Well, that one's pretty beefy. Quick on his feet, too. Clearly a seasoned fighter. His opponent's okay, but a bit showy. Compensating for being newer at this would be my guess. Mm-hmm. So, make your choice. Thank you. First guy, no doubt about it. 
You can see from a mile away that he lost. Well, that was quick. Not everything is as it appears. For example, were you and I to go at it, perhaps you'd bet in favor of yourself over me, and you'd lose. I'd use my cunning to ensure my victory, by any means necessary. Maybe I'd slip something into your food, level the playing field. You see now? Point taken. I'll keep that in mind for this next one. Gotta put that great advice to the test, right? <laughs> Ever the bold one. It seems we must continue these games until you finally concede. Oh, this is pointless! My head's about to split in two! Wow, Balthus, what's with you, friend? Never seen you so deep in thought. Next thing I know, Snow will be dumping out of the sky here in Abyss. <laughs> Shut your trap! I'm driving myself crazy over here. I've got a lot on my mind, okay? Like? Ah, fine. You know how I never got any stories out of you the other day? How could I forget? I won every last round. It was clear that both Lady Luck and the Goddess herself had given up on you. Your powers of deliberation weren't any help either. You caught me off my stride, got it? But it was clear I'd never win a story from you, so I went digging. Uh-huh. I was especially curious about that crest of yours, so I went rifling around for a lead. I got to thinking. You must have time on your hands if you're spending it thinking. Well, let's hear it. There's a story they tell where my mom grew up. Long ago, the village got in a squabble with some folks looking to conquer the place. A village elder gave some holy red stuff to their wounded soldiers. Some kind of liquid, who knows. After she did that, some of them made a complete recovery, against all odds. The rest of them were changed, but not for the better. They up and vanished before long. And then? Crests suddenly manifested for the ones who survived. They weren't inherited or gifted by the goddess. It's a real thinker, yeah? A real thinker. Near death, but survived, despite all odds. Wait, the elder whom my mom saved, could he have used something similar? No, it can't be. Yet, something here is unsettling in its familiarity. Hit the mark, did I? I don't know whether you hit the mark or missed it entirely. But your story was a cute one, regardless. The truth is, I've been trying to sort out who I am, and, well, I haven't been successful in it. I don't even know whether my mother is truly my birth mother, or why it is I have this crest. At this point, I have nothing but speculations. Maybe I'll sink into my grave without ever knowing the truth. Lots of things in life don't have an answer. Just pick the story you like best and run with it. That's better than finding out a truth you can't live with. You can really mess your head up like that. <sighs> Damn it, you're right. To think that something so trivial could bother someone like me. Look who's a quick learner. Thinking too much will sap your energy, pal. I avoid it whenever possible. In fact, it's been ages since I last thought so deeply. My head is really hurting now. <laughs> but if that old legend is true, what was that holy red stuff? What happened to the vanished soldiers? Once I start thinking about all that, I keep going round and round in my head. And then it's dawn. And then it's nightfall. And then it's dawn again! And... Uh... Uh, hey, Malthus? <gasps> Let me at him! Oh. Oh. Not a fight, then. Uh, that's what I get for overusing the old noggin. You damn fool. Hey, take this. Hmm? That smell. That sound. This is gold. A sizable stash of precious gold! What gives? Don't tell me you got your mitts on the church's vault. You fool. It's simply a reward. Nothing to get in a tizzy over. No way I can accept this, pal. Trust me, I haven't done anything to deserve it. Just shut up and take it. Call it your fee for 
providing me with information. What you told me. The tale from your mother's homeland? It really helped me. Anyway, if you don't actually need it, I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Maybe take your mom out for a night on the town? Looks like you're insisting then. Fine, I'll use it to buy her some good grub. But I thought you didn't actually find any answers in my little tale. Not quite, but it helped me in other ways. I've stopped vexing myself over unimportant details, like who I am or who I think I might be. That's all fine and good, but is it really worth its weight in gold? This is coin we're talking about! Look, do you want it or not? Is there something else you prefer? <sighs> wow, that was one hell of a sigh. Look, you're better than me at thinking and betting, but right in this moment, you're the fool. You. Do I like gold? Yes. Do I want it? Need it? Yes and yes. While we're at it, I like brawling. Women too. But there's something that I care about even more than gold, fighting, and women. Any ideas? Oh, this is tough. Mm. Let me guess. Hopelessly losing every bet you place? A good drink? You really think highly of me, don't you? Dead wrong. It's having a bash, bro. A friend to fight with and fight for. Seems I was a bit off base there. I guess to you, everyone is either an underling or a business associate. But with a bash bro, there's no such thing as an overdue loan. No hierarchies or other nonsense. It's someone to trust, both in and out of battle. Someone to share life's ups and downs with. I see. No need to reward a bash bro, I suppose. That's the ticket. I know you were born into a world of trickery and exploitation, but you don't have to live like that anymore. Now you've got me! I'm not accustomed to talks like this, I must admit. Hmm, how can I frame this? Nobody even knows my real name. Are you actually comfortable confessing such a warmth towards someone so... cold? Clearly. No matter who you are or what you've done, I care about you. That won't ever change. <laughs> now that is fresh. I told you my feelings and you laughed. <laughs> You're one of a kind, pal. I'm sorry. I've got to admit, I thought I'd heard it all. But you've managed to surprise me. It's the first time anyone has ever said something so sincere without trying to get something out of me. I could try to say it again with more swagger, if that helps. Nah, no need. Bash Bros. Has a nice ring to it. From here forward, we are forever Bash Bros, friend. I've got your back, pal. Make me run all over the monastery. Calm down. That was all on you, shady lady. Shady? Uh, you know full well I'm sensitive about that. It's as though you wish to be incinerated. <clears throat> what I mean to say is, all shall be forgiven when you do my bidding. Uh. I know, I know. It's an honor I don't extend to many. You have the rare opportunity to aid me in realizing my dream. I shall rebuild House Nouvelle. Nobility will be mine again, and the glory of my esteemed family will once more reign supreme. Blah, blah, blah. Restore House Nouvelle. Blah, blah, blah. Will you just stop? You're making my ears hurt. I am but an insignificant and beautiful creature. Surely there's nothing I have to offer for your plight. Your facade does not fool me. I know you for what you truly are. With the nobility's backing, Western Fodland's underworld is yours. Everyone has heard whispers of the savage Mockingbird. That is you they refer to, yes? <laughs> Your time would be better spent laying the groundwork for me to reclaim my title. I envision you using your connections to apply pressure on the nobles in Envar. Right. So say I indulge you, that I agree on this killer bird you speak of. What I offer comes at a high price. You do understand that, right, the lady? How exactly do you intend to compensate me? 
But what greater compensation could I offer than to play a part in restoring House Nouvelle? Restoration of houses does nothing to put food in my stomach. I suppose. But rest assured that upon my return to power, you shall be suitably rewarded. Let me cut through the mud here. You're broke, and you'll pay me after you get what you want. Wow. I love how irresponsible you are. <laughs> Refreshing. Then what would you have me do? I have nothing to bargain with now. No status, no wealth. Perhaps rather than turning to a killer bird for help, you should be bound before the nobles or some such. Get down on all fours and lick their boots. See what that'll get you. <laughs> Perhaps you're too prim and proper for that. Lick their boots? Is tonguing their footwear likely to sway them to my cause? My work here is done. No, I was not through with you yet. You, you come back here! Hey! Hey, shady lady. I see you're working into the wee hours. I have asked you before not to refer to me that way. Right, right, whatever, sorry. Uh, anyway, what kind of bizarre spells are you weaving? <laughs> An excellent question. It's a brand of spellcraft many have dreamed of, but none have achieved. A revolution in magical theory. Revolutionary spell work, huh? Steal yourself for this. The working transforms leather boots into licorice. The old serviceable shape with a new, sweeter taste. <laughs> uh, huh. That's certainly... Something. I'm sure you'll ravage the economy with this one. So, um... Why boots, precisely? I was inspired by your suggestion that licking the nobility's boots would fulfill my dream. I went to my chambers to discreetly taste my own boots. They were less appetizing than I had hoped. The thought of licking boots day in and day out was revolting. But then I thought, what if? Tonguing licorice boots rather than leather ones would make the whole ordeal much more palatable. <laughs> this is no run-of-the-mill penny-ante black magic. This is something new. Black licorice magic. I could lick the boots of a hundred nobles if they all tasted so scrumptious as licorice. Are you some kind of damn fool? <laughs> the common mind often has difficulty distinguishing between genius and idiocy. You set me the challenge of licking boots, and I would say that I have risen to it ably. Correct. I told you to do that. But I think you took what I said just a bit too literally. Then how did you mean it? Does the licking not count if the liquor enjoys it? It's mostly something you do by way of acting subservient. I'd even lick the mud from your boots, my lord. Get it? What? Are their nobles so depraved that they would take satisfaction in such a thing? There sure are. I've licked a boot or three in my day. Indeed? Oh, did it not turn your stomach? Well, of course it did. There's hardly any dignity in boot licking. Talking to you is truly entertaining. You're a special kind of strange. I've known many a noble in my life, but none like you. I was just dealing with a bunch of them, so the difference seems especially stark. Though, I guess you're not technically a noble at this point, are you? You were dealing with nobles in the dead of night? Wait, what? D did you just call me strange? Oof, I'm exhausted. Better go hit the sack. Don't work too hard, milady. I did not give you leave to go! Ugh, his rudeness knows no bounds. But I'll have my revenge. Perhaps by exposing his business with these nobles. He'll rue the day he loosened his tongue in front of me. <laughs> Remember when you mentioned briefly that you'd been in conference with some nobles? Did the topic of conversation happen to be me? I haven't the foggiest idea what you're talking about. Don't be coy with me. I recently received an offer of support from the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Bravo. Your dream of restoring your house is that much closer now, isn't it? We shall see. 
My response is on hold until I could confirm something first. Hmm? <laughs> you sound as befuddled as I feel. These are events you set in motion, are they not? I want only the truth from you! Lie to me and you shall be incinerated! That doesn't leave me much wiggle room, does it? Alright, I'll tell you. So yeah, I might have been negotiating with some nobles. Maybe. Possibly. You do recall that I have nothing I can offer you in return, yes? <laughs> of course I know that. I just did what I needed to get what I wanted. Like always. Explain. All my life, I've known how to angle to get everything I've ever wanted. Money, social standing, the whole kid and caboodle. See? That's how the savage mockingbird lives. Ever since I was a kid, it's how I've done things. What does that have to do with... Wait, are you admitting to being the savage mockingbird? And I find myself wanting in on this house of yours. The one you've yet to rebuild. What? No, no, wait. You haven't yet answered my question about the savage. Preened as this bird might be, his only home is a dark, wet back alley. As long as I'm me, nothing can change that. So I figure, if I could leave that home of mine and live simply as Yuri, even if only for a while, you know, I might like somewhere proper to return to. Somewhere cozy, comfy even. Better than House Row, where last I left from. I'm not sure what you're insinuating here. I'll get your house back for you. And I only ask for one thing as payment. Once House Nouvelle is back in good standing, I want a home there. You mean you wish to join House Nouvelle? But the only way to do that... Marriage. Bingo. Quick, easy, simple. You and I. Spouses. You heard me. It's a fine enough trade. What's the problem? I mentioned nothing about a problem. Where did you get that notion? I've always found you very useful, though I could do with less, much less, of your back talk. I suppose Milady doesn't want a rogue for a husband. <laughs> Can't handle all that is Yuri, hmm? No, no, but there is a procedure to this sort of thing. How can you join my house when I have none? What? You want to do things in order? How boring. I suppose we'll be lovers for now. Uh, you mock me! You mock me and I will not have it! Me? Mock? I'm being sincere. I'd never live out another dull day with you by my side. That is my only fear. A life spent by your side may be more taxing than I could stand. Seeing you so flustered provides endless entertainment. <laughs> This is boring. Mind if I sleep? You know I won't care. Night watch or not, it's still just for training purposes. Though, you'd likely get in trouble if someone sees you catching Z's. You wouldn't wake me if someone was here? Fine then, I won't sleep. Your call. Being so quiet, Yuri Bird. Say something. I don't always fill the void with my voice, you know. Sometimes it's pleasant to just enjoy the quiet and stargaze. No thanks. Stargazing is a waste of time. The stars don't even stay put all year. Those jerks. See that one? That star is home to the goddess. Yeah. Watching over us from afar. Hmm. That's called the Blue Sea Star, but it doesn't look blue. At all, really. Wait, no, hang on. Maybe it wasn't that one. But that big one over there, that's it! Isn't it? You don't know the first thing about stars, do you? No one ever taught you? Never, no. Well, the Blue Sea Star is really big. It stands out. Sometimes you can't see it at all but other times, it's the brightest thing in the sky. Interesting. So then, which star was I pointing out just now? 
You might have to point it out again. Which constellation were you looking at? Let's see... Uh, it looks a bit like a cat. Uh, no, no, that's not right. Maybe more like a fish? Or a... fishing rod? <laughs> what? I'm serious. See, those stars there are forming a shape that looks very much like a fishing rod. <laughs> okay, sorry. But that looks nothing like a fishing rod. Or a cat. I'm surprised you know so little about stars. I thought you knew everything. Who do you think I am? The goddess herself? There is plenty I don't know. But I'm always aiming to learn more. I'm uncomfortable not knowing things. So, come on then, Happy. Teach me about the stars. That'll be a pain for both of us. As painful as sitting here idling? It's not like you're going to sleep at this point. Clearly you know quite a bit about them. Teach me. Fine, fine. Look up there. To the north. Your other north. See that star? That's called the King's Right Hand. Let me get this straight. The stars aren't moving, but the ground we stand on is? Yep. We're on a big round thing that's always spinning. And that's why the stars seem to move through the sky. Hard to believe, isn't it? But it's true. I admit I'm having a difficult time wrapping my head around it. How is it you know these things, anyway? If you were a noble, it would make sense that you'd have a formal education on all of this. In the village where I was born, there were people who studied the stars. They taught me. A village of stargazing folk, huh? Do tell. I've never heard of such a place. It's a very well-hidden village. It was a small settlement deep in the forest, where no one ever bothered us. I was born there, grew up there, but when I got older, I felt like I needed to see the world. I couldn't live my whole life in one place, you know? So I struck out on my own. I always knew you were an odd little bird, but your birthplace makes you a rare little bird. Yeah, well, pretty soon after leaving her nest, this rare little bird was put in a cage. I thought it might be some kind of punishment for leaving the forest. What the hell? You think that because you wanted to live your life, you'd be punished? That's ridiculous. Look at this objectively. Was it punishment? Or was it just plain bad luck? There's nothing wrong with wanting to see the world and expand your horizons. Take me. Had I never left that gutter I call home, I'd have gone my whole life never learning how to look at the stars. Yeah. I left my village because I thought I'd find a better life beyond the forest. Now, I'm not so sure. Regret is pointless. What matters is how we live right here, right now. You know? Yeah. Do you ever want to return back home? I could say no, but I'd be lying. I've been feeling homesick lately. Nothing happened there, for better or worse. There wasn't much to be scared of. Everyone said the outside world was dangerous. That beyond the forest, all we'd find was an early grave. That wasn't exactly true, but my life was for sure easier when I lived there. I used to spend my days fishing, hunting for pretty flowers, running around for no reason. A rare occurrence indeed. What is? Seeing you smile in that way. You're always so... I don't know. Neutral? That's not true. I smile when there's something to smile about. It's strange, though. When I'm talking to you, I can't help but let my guard down. I don't like to discuss where I came from, but with you, I feel like I can open up. You know, I've been thinking a lot about my mom and dad lately. I wonder, are they even alive? So happy. Are you going back home or what? That came out of nowhere. Haven't you noticed there's a war going on? I can't leave now. Hmm, hadn't noticed. Nope. Now that I have, will you head home once it's over? To check on your parents? No. Even after the war, I can't return. With my curse, I might destroy the whole village. I won't put them at risk like that. True. I want to say you could go there and everything would be dandy. 
The way things tend to shake out, though, it can be pretty hard not to sigh. What about you? You don't mind spending all this time away from... wherever you call home? Can't say I've spent much time thinking about it. Maybe after the war's over. I've got plenty to keep me occupied. If I drop things and head home, my people lose respect for me. I can't have that. I see. I know I should visit home at some point. It's been more than a decade since I left, though. They probably think I died. They might. All the more reason for you to go back. I know you're scared. But if you keep your visit brief, it'll work out fine. I don't know about yours, but my mother would want to know that I'm okay. I suppose I could stop by for a short visit. That might be nice. Still worried? I can accompany you. I'm sure you'll find some use for me. Huh? You know you'll be so caught up in my lively conversations, you'll have very little time for sighing. Hmm... That plan could backfire. I might find the conversation boring, and then... That would never happen. I wouldn't allow for it. And on the off chance a beast does appear... Well, that'll clear up your boredom pretty quickly, won't it? You've got a weird sense of humor, Yuri Bird. I like that. I guess I wouldn't feel so nervous about going home if you went with me. I might even have a good time. When you're there, you feel closer to the stars. They look so clear and bright. I'd love to show you. <laughs> I look forward to it. I bet we'll even see some of the stars you taught me about. And maybe I'll finally lay eyes on that constellation you told me about. A fishing rod, was it? <laughs>